In this video, we're going to look at how you can sketch a graph of a helix drawn in perspective, the way it might look if you try to draw it within the typical X, Y, and Z axes in three space. So I'm going to start with the following vector valued function, which models a helix. And we'll go with 2t, um, 4 cos t, 4 sine of t. For a zero less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 2 pi. All right, so the first thing we want to do is uh, sketch our axes. All right, so let's get a ruler here. All right, so here's the x axis. the y-axis and then we'll draw the z-axis all right so there's our there are our axes and we want to draw the a helix within the perspective of these axes here so um, next thing we need to do is draw the ends um, imagine like the top and the bottom of a soup can when you take an infinitely long cylinder, but you chop it off um, through planes that are perpendicular to the axis. Okay, well, since x is equal to 2t, we're going to go from x equals 0 to x equals 2 times 2 pi, which is 4 pi. All right, so let's measure this out. Got my ruler. Measure this one out here. We'll have four pi here, and then we'll have pi there, two pi there, and three pi there. All right, and so our ends are going to be uh, circles, um, a radius four circle. All right, so let's draw the opposite axis here. draw the opposite axis here. All right, now I need a radius of four, so let's draw four units in each direction from where x is zero. Four to the right, four to the left, four up, and four down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this at this end here in an orange. We're going to draw a circle radius four when x is zero. Okay, and we'll do something similar over here. Let's draw new axes. And we need to draw four in each of the directions, labeled here. Okay, so four to the left, four to the right. Got those backwards there. Four to the left is there, four to the right is there. Four up will go here, and then four down will be right there. I want an orange circle at the front of the cylinder that will contain this helix now. Oops. Yeah, roughly, roughly like that. All right, so we've got our axes, we've got our ends in the shape of circles, and now we need the outer shell. Okay, the outer shell, what we're going to do is draw a line going, and this is the outside of the king. So from here to here, on this side, 
and then from here to more like that on that side. Okay, and then what we're going to do is label the four points corresponding to the quadrinal angles on each end. These are going to be where um, t is 0, t is pi over 2, t equals pi, t equals 3 pi over 2, and back to t equals 2 pi. All right, so I labeled these points in red okay, in each of those four directions from there and in each of the four directions from there. All right, and once we've got those uh, plotted, we'll go ahead and draw the corresponding, um, we'll draw um, segments that connect the corresponding points on each circle that share the common um, quadrant. All right, so I'm gonna put this in the dashed here. Okay, something like that. All right, so after we've got that kind of set up, now we're going to go ahead and go to our T chart. So we've got your T, we've got the X and the Y and the Z. All right, so let's recall that the X was 2T, the Y is 4 cosine of T, and Z is 4 sine of T. So 0... I'm going to use the quadrinal angles of 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then back to 2 pi. All right, so the x will go from 0, we'll get a pi, a 2 pi, a 3 pi, and a 4 pi as we progress through the quadrinal angles. Now, what will the y's do? 4 cosine of t... Cosine starts at its crest. We'll get a value of 4. Quarter of the way through the period, it's 0. Halfway through the period, it's negative 4. Three quarters of the way through the period, it's 4. I mean, a 0. And then um, all the way through the period, we're back at 4. For the z, the sine all right, starts at 0, and then the crest is at 4. Okay, then back to the x-axis, then a negative 4 at its trough, and then we go back to 0 when we get to 2 pi. All right, so as we plot along each of these um, red uh, dashed lines here, for t equals 0, we're going 0, 4, 0. So it starts there. Let's let's use a different color here. Let's, let's draw this in blue. All right, so there's... 0, 4, 0. Okay, at pi over 2, we're going to be at y equals 0 and z equals 4. Okay, so what we're going to do here is z will be 4 one quarter of the way. So let's, let's take this axis here. There's a quarter of the way, there's halfway, and there's three quarters of the way. That's one quarter of the way along the red dashed line. That's going to correspond to t equals pi over 2. So t equals 0 is there. And over here, t equals pi over 2 is right there. All right, for pi, this is halfway through. The y is going to be minus 4, and the z is going to be 0. So at the angle of pi, let's uh, put the dashed lines here. We'll keep them in blue here. All right, one quarter of the way would be here. Halfway would be here. Three quarters away would be here. We're going to put right there. That would correspond to t equals pi. All right, now we're going to work our way down with the 3 pi over 2. That's going to be along the bottom most of our red dashed line segments where the y is 0 and z is 4. So let's get the ruler set up here. One quarter of the way, halfway, three quarters of the way. Three quarters of the way, you're at the bottom, you're at the trough there. So that'll correspond to t equals 3 pi over 2. And then t equals 2 pi will go back to where the um, t is equal to 4. 
and see, I mean, where the uh, Y is 4 and the Z is 0. And that'll occur here. So T equals 2 pi. All right, so as we work our way around from here to here, all right, so imagine that we draw a parallel, um, you know, the outside of a parallel circle there. Okay, I've got drift slightly from here to here, about like that. Okay, but then, it's gonna, the, then the curvature is going to really pick up here as we've got to go through to here, but through the outside. So, so somewhere in this area, we've got to actually make contact with the shell of the sphere before we, or the cylinder before we go back in this way. All right, so watch the curve come in, start to tighten a bit, goes around the edge of the, the shell of the cylinder, and then we hit the pie right there. Okay, and now imagine from halfway here, circles about like that, and then the circles about like that. So we've got to draw a graph that kind of meanders between those two uh, non-intersecting arcs. So watch the curve kind of bend a little more this way. Hit the t equals three pi over two. And as we work our way back around, okay, now imagine about three quarters away right there. That circle would complete out to about there. Okay, so somewhere in here, we gotta make contact with the outside shell. Something about like that. It hits the shell, then it wraps back around ever so slightly and comes back in where t equals 2 pi. And so the shape would be something like that. All right, and if you continued it, if you drew the next piece, let's draw that in purple, roughly parallel to this, watch, watch the purple movement here. Okay, but I've got to translate it down the line. Roughly now all of a sudden it has that loop around it that you would expect when you like look at a slinky from a from a, a skew angle, you might see the slinky. You know, it looks like it's intersecting on itself when it really isn't, but that's just the perspective. You're near here, but you're far that on the other point. All right, so that's what a rough graph could look like for this um, 2t, 4 cos t, and 4 sine t. From t equals 0 to t equals 2 pi. And then you just make photocopies of that. And if you wanted to draw more of the uh, loops away from you, just kind of photocopy that and draw it out here or draw it near you. And you can extend that graph. Orientation, of course, is gonna be the arrows going this way. And that's what a rough graph of that um, helix would look like.